Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to watch this. Let's work through this quest together. Quest number one. Okay, I'm gonna simplify this expression. I think the easiest thing to do here would be to distribute the negative four to the 12 and the negative three x. So we'll get negative four times 12 is negative 48. Negative four times negative three x is going to be a positive 12 x. Remember, negative times negative is positive plus 12x, so 13 minus 48 is going to be, let's just be sure, negative 35, 12x plus 12x is 24x, and that's it. Remember that we can't put these together, we cannot add these together because these are a bunch of ones or a bunch of negative ones if you look at it that way. And these are a bunch of x's, and they're like apples and oranges. We cannot combine them and put them together like that. 8 times 7x, we're just going to go ahead and distribute this. 8 times negative 12. 8 times 7x is going to be 56x. 8 times negative 12 is going to be negative 96 minus 15x plus 7. 56x minus 15x is going to be see, 41x. Uh, negative 96 plus 7 is going to be negative 89. So 41x minus 89. Um, negative 2. See, in this problem, we have the distribution of negative 2, and we have the distribution of positive 5 into these parentheses. So negative 2 times negative 7x is 14x. Remember, negative times negative is positive. Negative, times, or negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. 5 times 7x, now we have a 35x. Three, or 5 times negative 11 is negative 55. And plus 14x. And now we'll just collect all the x's together. Uh, 14x plus 14x is 28x. 50, 63x. Um, negative 18 minus 55. Negative 73. Let's just double check that. 35 plus 28, 73, and uh, negative 18 minus 55, negative 73. All right. Next, let's distribute this negative 2. Mm, you can certainly distribute this negative 2 to all three of these terms, and that would be 100% correct. What I would suggest is inside the parentheses, we have a 5 and a negative 7. They are like terms. They can be combined. So we could first say 5 minus 7 is negative 2 plus 8x. We just simplified the inside of the parentheses before we distribute. And it makes a little bit less work, I think. So negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Negative 2 times 8x is negative 16x plus 13x. Uh, negative 16x plus 13x is going to be negative 3x. And we have a plus Four in there. Okay, uh, 2x minus 5x, it's negative 3x. 6 minus 12 is negative 6. This one's a little bit tricky. Um, oftentimes uh, I'll see people distribute this 5 into the parentheses, but here's a problem with that. You can go back and look at all the examples we've done so far, but the, if I jump back here, we distributed this negative 2 because it says, like if we were to put a little speech bubble on it, it would say negative 2 times the, let's say the parentheses, okay? That's what the speech bubble would say. Negative 2 times this. But let's read this. Let's see if it says 5 times. Well, it says, if you were to read it out loud, uh, 5 minus, not 5 times, not 5 times anything. Yeah. Distribution is for multiplying things by parentheses. But we're not multiplying. It's 5 minus the parentheses, whatever's in the parentheses. So we're not going to distribute the 5 because the 5 is not multiplied by the parentheses. But what we could think of as being multiplied by the parentheses is a negative 1. So we could distribute this negative 1 to both of these terms. Negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x. Negative 1 times 9 is negative 9. Uh, 5 minus 9 is negative 4. And minus 2x, there we go. Um, 
OK, we're going to solve this equation. <coughs> if this were a set of scales, a balancing scale, then on one side, we would have m, right? Some like mystery amount. How much is it? I don't know. But I do know that we have that amount plus 5 more. And on this side, we have 13. If I want to know how much this is, well, I just want to leave it by itself on this side and see how many it bounces with on the other side. So I'll take these out of there, right? which means I need, now this side's heavier, I need to also take five of these out. Right? That's minus five and minus five. I just took five away from both sides. I am canceling out this 5 by taking 5 away. I'll take 5 away from this side. Uh, 13 minus 5 is 8. So m equals 8. Because what we have here is essentially m plus 0. Uh, so m plus 0 equals 8, m equals 8. Um, here we have a two-step equation. Um, subtract 2 first, just like here. Just like we subtracted 5 from both sides, we subtracted 2 from both sides. So for now, what we're left with is 92 minus 2 is 90. 10x equals 90. 10 times some number is 90. I bet you can tell that number is 9. But if I get 10 divided by 10, that is 1x. And 90 divided by 10 is 9. And if 1 times x equals 9, then x equals 9. So let's divide by 10 on both sides, even though it's very plain to see that this number is 9. Let's get in the habit of dividing both sides by 10. OK, a little word problem for you. So you're taking a road trip. OK, we're in a car. Uh, you've already driven 275 of the 800 miles. So if I picture this, I can imagine there's a total of 800 miles to drive from, here, from beginning to end. And I've already driven. 275 miles, right? Okay. Uh, and we have the rest to go. If you're driving at 75 miles an hour, how many more hours do you still have to drive? Um, we could, there's all sorts of equations that we could write depending on how our brains think. I'm thinking the amount I've driven and the amount left to drive, to drive, should equal the total distance of the trip, right? So how much have I driven? How much have I already driven? I've driven 275 miles plus how much I have left to drive. We'll think about that in a second. That should all come out to be 800, right? You might think differently. You might just take 275 from 800 and say, well, this part equals whatever's left. That works too. That's an equation that works as well. Well, how much do we have left to, to drive? If I drive at 75 miles an hour, okay, 75 miles an hour for the question mark number of hours, x number of hours, right? If I knew how many hours I had driven, then how would I use 75 and the number of hours that I'd driven to figure out how far that is? Well, I would take 75, right, 75 miles per hour and multiply it by x hours. Hour divided by hour is 1. So 75 miles times uh, x is going to be how many miles I've uh, driven or can drive in x hours. Right. So distance, time, or uh, sorry, the speed times the time is the distance. And you know that intuitively. You know that if you were had to have driven for 8 hours, you multiply that by 75, you have driven that many miles. If you've driven for 20 hours and you multiply 20 by 75, whatever the product of that is, that's how many miles you've driven in 20 hours. Because every hour you go 75, in two hours you go 125 miles, in three hours we've gone 300 miles, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, or I guess in two hours we've gone 150 miles, and in three hours we've gone 325 miles. Uh, but then it just keeps going on like that. We're just going to take our speed times our time, and that's our distance. Um, so we solve this equation. Uh, we might want to write it a little bit more simply if we want to make it easier to look at. 
Uh, very much like the equation we just did in number 8. Subtract 275 from both sides to get 75x on this side. Um, let's go ahead and give my brain a little break here. 525. 75 times x is equal to 525. We'll divide by 75 on both sides. And x is 25 divided by 75. We still have seven hours left to drive. Seven hours. Okay. Right here we have a number divided by 7 equals 14. Some number divided by 7 is 14, so this number must be whatever 14 times 7 is, right? That's just like our common sense. Also, in the spirit of doing the same thing on both sides, if I multiply this by 7, 7 divided by 7 is 1. I have 1 times x equals 14 times 7. What is that? 14 times 7? 98. So x equals 98. Uh, here again, we would like to be looking at 1 times x equals some number, right? That would be the answer. If I could make this a 1 instead of a 2 fifths, then I would be in good shape. So how about if we multiply 2 fifths by 5 halves, what will happen? We'll get 10 over 10, right? 10 over 10 times x, that's just 1 times x. So that's great. So if we multiply by 5 halves, we'll get 10 over 10, which is 1. And so once we know what that number is, we'll know what x is. Um, but what we'll have to do is multiply by 5 halves on both sides. And so 30 times 5 is 150, divided by 2 is going to be 75. x is 75. All right. There's that, number 11. Next one, number 12. Uh, we have 9 times some number equals 63, so we'll divide both sides by 9. By this time, we've already done this several times on, uh, on other questions. If you divide both sides by 9, y is equal to Seven. That is, yes, that's the last one. Uh, so thanks for watching. I hope that helped. Uh, if you have any questions, stop by, ask, leave a comment on this video, whatever you like, and I will help you. Thanks for watching again.